Hello and welcome to the Mass Tort Update. In Health This Week, the FDA plans to add information about possible psychiatric side effects to labels of ADHD drugs. Recent studies have shown that the longer the patient is kept under deep anesthesia, the higher the risk of death. The EPA has proposed allowing manufacturers to test their pesticides on humans when seeking government approval for their products. That's ridiculous. The FDA alleges that Medtronic, Inc., the world's largest maker of devices that help maintain a normal heartbeat, failed to correct manufacturing problems and investigate complaints about its LifePak-12 external defibrillators. Able Laboratories, a maker of generic prescription drugs, recalled all of its products on May 23rd, saying deficiencies in the testing procedures might have resulted in sub- or super-potent drugs. Scientific studies on the dust from the World Trade Center disaster and people exposed to it suggest that not only are the health effects, but also the contamination may itself persist long after impact. And in safety warnings, Second Chance Body Armor, Inc. said that recent tests suggest that any bullet-resistant vests with Xylon may fail to perform and result in serious injury or death. The company has already recalled 130,000 other vests. In new cases, parents have filed more than 4,800 lawsuits over the use of a vaccine suspected of causing autism in children. The proof of causation remains very controversial. A New York man is suing Pfizer for retinal damage caused by the impotence drug Viagra. The FDA is reportedly investigating 42 other reports of blindness caused by Viagra and Cialis. The manufacturers vehemently deny any such link. And in legal decisions, the Supreme Court has ruled that ExxonMobil must pay as much as $1.3 billion to gas station owners that claim they never received a fuel discount the company promised them. But my prices keep going up, and yours too. A Tennessee judge reduced a punitive damage award against Daimler Chrysler from $98 million to $20 million. And the California Supreme Court ruled that arbitration agreements between businesses and their customers cannot preclude a class action lawsuit. In verdicts, according to an AP story, a jury awarded $10 million to the family of an electrician and his stepson who died when a Coleman heater filled their camping tent with carbon monoxide. Sixty deaths have already been linked to the heater so far, but no proof so far. Ford was cleared of liability in a rollover case in California, and in settlements, Boston Scientific has agreed to settle a six-year investigation into its recall of a flawed cardiac stents. There is no admission of wrongdoing as part of that settlement. And Daimler Chrysler Services will settle a pair of class action lawsuits filed by minority customers in both Chicago and New Jersey. The lawsuits allege that the automaker discriminated against their credit applications because of their race. Again, no admissions. Legislation affecting consumer rights, the asbestos legislation that would deprive all, most asbestos victims of the right to compensation is still being hotly contested on Capitol Hill and we'll update you more on that next week. While in federal court, rule makers are moving forward on rule changes that will make those emails we're getting in litigation more difficult to obtain and to show juries. Now, where are we going with that? Should you have any questions or need any assistance, you can contact us by clicking on the box below. Thank you, and we'll see you next week, and welcome back.